So it looks like I'm going to be rebuilding a second um, transmission for 2012 Canon Renegade, which is sitting right here, um, doing some, a few things to it. But anyway, um, I've done one for the 800, which is a little bit um, simpler than this one. I mean, they're both fairly easy to, to do, but uh, since this one goes in the 1000, the case is a lot different and, and bigger all the gears are a little bit beefier uh, but the reason why i'm taking this one apart is because my shift fork broke so you can see here completely broke it's not supposed to do this at all i got a replacement i got a used one so i'm gonna go ahead and install it but uh, in order to reinstall it um you have to line everything up if you see here there's a notch there those line up with markings on these gears there should be three one there there and up there so um i already kind of have everything apart cleaned everything with diesel real good in the brush all the bearings are good i put some um some gear oil on the bearings and everything's really tight, so I'm not replacing any of the bearings. All I'm doing is just replacing that shift fork. So I'm going to take this out, which already kind of loosened, clean everything, and then um, I'll show you how to put it back together. Okay, guys, so I, got, I have everything apart. Now I need to put it back together. So the reason why I'm doing this video is because I looked everywhere online and couldn't find anything. Since this is for a, a 1000... Uh, Can-Am. Uh, it's a little bit harder to find the manual for. You can find tons of stuff for the 800 and I already made a video of, of uh, rebuilding the 800 transmission, which is it's pretty easy. This one is also pretty easy to to do. It just, you know, you need to make sure everything lines up. You know, you don't want to bolt everything up and then realize that it doesn't work. So that's the whole reason why I'm doing this video to help you guys out since there's not much online. Uh, but anyway, um, if you have to replace the bearings, I'm not doing it on this one because all the bearings are okay. The only thing that broke was the shift fork, which I got a replacement. But um, you need to replace this bearing pretty easy. Just press it out. And uh, I don't see any other bearings that, uh, like needle bearings, that need to be punched out or anything. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. So... From what I got is uh, the first thing that goes back on, you know, you have a washer or a, a gear here that has to come out to get this assembly off. And then uh, when you put it back together, make sure that these little forks, this is what engages your gears. Make sure that this is facing towards the case, towards the bearing. So, um, you know, how you take it out is exactly how you put it in. If you have to replace these needle bearings inside, then you know, you have a clip that you, you can undo and it all comes apart. But uh, everything is good, so I don't have to do that. Um, but just make sure that these little things are facing down. And also you have one that has two little nipples there and then one that just has one. Um, the one that's by only has one goes in first. So it goes in like this that's an assembly and it goes right in there and then um, the last thing you'll do is put the shaft through there and it kind of keeps it back in place so since it's a little bit harder to do with uh, one hand i'm gonna go ahead and do it and uh, give you guys a better idea of what it looks like and stuff i got this whole assembly in as you can see these little things line up so you just put the shaft the shaft straight through there and it kind of locks it in place and goes into your case your cases has little little grooves that it goes goes into so if you see those little deals sticking up those go in here and then this is what determines what gear you're in and as it moves these light up and down and it engages everything so uh just make sure that those little nipples uh, go inside these screws. This is from the 800. I just have a spare one. So they go in here and when you put it in gear it moves it up and down. 
and that's how it gets engaged into high low reverse neutral park so just make sure that lines up and then put the shaft through there and then we'll go to the next step. so i forgot to mention um this gear that goes in here it's it's kind of tricky to put everything back together um at the same time so you kind of have to pull it off out of the bearing a little bit to slide it in and it has a washer on the bottom this needle bearing this piece here also comes off and then you have this gear so you have the gear and then this washer and then that should be it for that so once you kind of have to slide both of these things together at the same time because it it goes in into these gears here so um kind of have to put it all together kind of mess with it to slide it in and then once you slide it in then we can mess with these little things here so I'll go ahead and do that right now got that inside kind of have to slide it all at the same time kind of um and you put these little grooves in here. There you go, just like that. See how it went in? It lines up, and then you put the shaft. Through there, make sure you oil it. Um, so next, let's go ahead and put this bad boy in there. Uh, again, this bearing is good. It has a nut out here, up here. So if you need to re replace it, then the only thing I can think of is sandwich it between two pieces of wood, put it in a vise, and undo the nut. Or maybe uh, you can hang on to it and use an impact to get that nut off. Uh, but since these are good, then I'm not going to replace them. This slides right in here, just like this. So it's pretty easy. It seems to be a little bit easier than the 800. So now, just come back here and you make sure that these dots line up here. And then you put your shift fork with that notch. Now you put this in that groove there and make sure it lines up. And that means you're in a good spot to put it back together. So to check, to check everything, you can run it through the gears. You get a screwdriver. You pry this open and you move it and you see if it engages in gear and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that uh, right now make sure everything moves right and uh, I'll show you what these numbers or what these little things mean so um, you can put it through the gears all right guys so I'm gonna show you what these mean so this here numbers uh, I think they call it a number six this is your parking position here and then you go to the next groove uh, I think the book has it as seven, that's your reverse range. And then the next one, this group here, is number three, which is your neutral. And then your next one is number four, is high range. And then this one here is number five, is your low range. So right now where I have it, should be neutral. With this side, Whenever you put this casing back, just make sure you clean everything. I use a scotch Bright pad to clean everything, take all that gunk off, and then clean it with some free cleaner or carburetor cleaner or acetone. Um, but uh, it's pretty easy to go back. You know, it's kind of obvious. You put this to that, and then kind of everything falls together. Um, when you put this, though, make sure that this here goes in right here, so you kind of have to use both hands and maybe a little pick to kind of slide this back and forth to make sure that this goes here. Whenever you move this, this engages it by uh, this little nipple that it has here. So just make sure that goes back together. 
in that way to make sure everything works properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then test it one more time. Getting everything ready to marry these two halves together. I cleaned it with some um, brake cleaner. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put a thin layer of that gasket maker. This is what I use, it's the Mega Black. It's a high temp silicone gasket maker. I've used it plenty of times before, never had a problem. So uh, the way you do it is just put a little bit on your finger. I like to use gloves because this stuff uh, is kind of hard to get off sometimes. And then you just kind of run a thin layer all the way around. And uh, it has instructions from the back. You can just follow the instructions. I think you have to wait a certain uh, amount of time. I've always uh, put it together and screwed it kind of hand tight for a few minutes, maybe five minutes, and then I finished tightening it up. Never had a problem with it in the past, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this, and then put it on this side, and then bolt it on, and then move to the other side of the, of the case. So I'll go ahead and get this done. As you can see, I put that gasket maker on both halves, getting ready to marry them together, and um, bolt it up, and then I'll be done with this. Right before I bolt it in, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that everything lines up and it looks like it does so it's good to go go ahead and finish doing it and um, also make sure that you do both sides uh, because sometimes you get little hard to reach places so if you put it on one side it'll cover that area that you couldn't reach um, and it just makes a better seal so go ahead and do both sides Make sure that little thing lines up. Looks like I'm gonna have to get it pick. Make sure it goes into that little nipple that's uh, sticking up. So everything is lining up pretty good. Gonna go ahead and gently tap it into place and then bolt it up. Everything went uh, pretty smoothly. You're gonna have to tap it a little bit to guide it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these screws. I'm gonna wait about five minutes to let some of this stuff uh, dry before I, you know, finish uh, torquing it down. But uh, you have different size bolts. So uh, obviously this little one will not be able to go there because it doesn't reach. So it's pretty easy to put back. Uh, something that I like to do is uh, they all pretty much stick out a certain amount. So even the little one, the short ones, if you find a spot like this one here, see how it sticks up, sticks out a little bit past the case, even though it's shorter, shorter than the other, than the other one. So I'm going to go ahead and try them all. And then once I get them all and the spots that they go, then I'm going to wait a few minutes and then uh, finish torquing it down. Looks like it's ready. So I'm going to go ahead and do a crisscross pattern until I get all of these done. the uh, silicone the gasket maker on now you have to put this shaft and gear this is what goes into your secondary goes in that bearing right there slides right in everything spins nice so go ahead and put that case back on top of here and then uh, wait five minutes and bolt it back up So all we have to do now is put the actuator back in. You have to remove this to get to these bolts because it kind of gets in the way. So uh, make sure you oil that uh, O-ring. Make sure you line up that little groove there with that. Slide it in, bolt it in, and you should be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And, um, and then just kind of check everything after that to make sure it goes through the gears pretty good. and. Um, inspect it right before we put it back into the uh, renegade. One more thing that I almost forgot. So make sure you put this 
in there and don't forget the o-ring and again make sure you oil that and it slides right in there in that little groove because if you forget you're gonna get a bunch of oil leaking out of there so make sure you don't forget this she is all done overall it wasn't hard at all i am gonna have to replace this which i already have one um, this one does work. I think it's like the ankle sensor or something for the transmission, but um, overall it was pretty easy. I think it was easier than the 800 transmission. It doesn't have as many um, hidden bearings as the 800. It does have a couple here, but uh, if you look at my other video for the other transmission for the 800, uh, I have some tips on how to get them out. That's really easy. All you need is a a long bolt, a piece of metal, and a welder, and it comes right out. So um, hopefully this, this helps you guys out. Like I said, I couldn't find anything online to get it, get it put back together. So I um, decided to make this video so nobody else would suffer as much as I did trying to look for some stuff. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and let it dry, all the silicone, before I install it. And then, um, you know, have some fun with it. So... Good luck, guys.